isn't it? Yeah. Um, tell me how the Penumbra Theater got going. I mean, here you are now <coughs> helping your mom out in the nightclub. Yeah. Um, you've got the degree. <laughs> yeah. what, what was in the middle there between? Well, the, um, it was, this was uh, 19, I think, 67. And uh, there was a, a, a Democratic administration. Mm -hmm. And um, there were programs designed to, rather like work progress administration programs, mm -hmm. programs that were designed to uh, uh, find and help talent and initiative in the inner cities, one of which was the CETA program, mm, right. Concentrated right. Employment and Training Act. Mm -hmm. Kind of forgotten about that. <laughs> yeah. And um, the community center in which the, our theater is still located, the Halley Q. Brown Community Center, got one of those CETA grants. It was for $150,000. Um, they needed someone to administer the grant. They hired me as the artistic mm. director to do that. And I uh, hired, I think, 20 actors at $150 a week. It was mm -hmm. wonderful. You could never do that again. No, wow. But, um, and this was 1967. <coughs> yeah, no, uh, no, 76. Oh, 76, okay. Yeah. And um, we began doing shows. And, uh, um, and was your goal from the get-go, Lou, to do shows that featured and explored African American oh, yeah. themes. I mean, that yeah. was there was never anything no. other than that as your from main, the start. In, in fact, uh, what had happened was is we, I, there were <clears throat> a number of artists who were working at other theaters and and um, uh, doing other things that that were rather dissatisfied with the portrayals of African Americans on the stages in the Twin Cities and on television and movies and so forth. Mm -hmm. And we uh, knew there were other facets to that story and um, were sort of determined to find a forum upon which those stories could be told. And it turned out to be Penumbra Theater. Yeah. When you look back, do you think, wow, I really started something that, that um, has kind of a life of its own beyond beyond me and and do you have this amazing strong feeling of pride that I'm guessing you would have well pride yeah in that that I'm still standing and so <laughs> is the theater those are all it's good still things growing, yeah as, it's as still you growing just saying you feel yeah yeah I, I think that that the theatrical landscape of the Twin Cities and the nation was significantly different at that time and many of the artists who came out of that organization went on to change the landscape of the national theater and the theater of the world. I mean, there was, it was a very special group of people. We had no idea, of course, that we were special at the time, uh, um, but they turned out to be so. I mean, yeah. You, you, um, <coughs> you're known in part now for for your great collaboration with August Wilson mm -hmm. you did more you produced and, and directed more of his plays than any other theater in the United States um, yeah. you must miss him a great deal in terms of his yeah. presence in your, yeah. your life and your career I think so I, I, I think certainly he was Penumbra's entree into the larger world because he made it and um, people began to wonder where this guy came from. And then they looked back, and we were more than ready to tell him from over here. Uh -huh, sure. um, but more than that, the, the literature um, changes one. When you engage smart thinkers and people who are forward thinking and, not a, and brave beyond measure with their work, it changes you. You can't. You become more brave. Well, you become more introspective, perhaps braver in some cases. Certainly, more perceptive, more cognizant of your world and the different uh, ways one might view that world. It just deepens you as a person. Um, many of the artists, but myself included, who work at Penumbra, uh, they don't view it as art 
They understand that it's art, but they also understand that it's their citizenship. We're trying to do art for social change. This is art with a purpose. Mm -hmm. And um, where those worlds come together is where we engage our community. We try to do good art that clears a space for the community to engage itself in difficult issues. And so to get people thinking, to oh, get yeah. people acting. Yeah. I read somewhere <clears throat> that right now you're choosing plays that have to do with choices. Choices between your dream and your family. This is a quote. Mm -hmm. Choices between your future and your past. Choices between wealth and integrity. Yeah. Those are heavy themes <laughs> and major they themes, are. aren't they? Yeah, and, um, and wonderful that we can find great art to interrogate ourselves and our interaction with the world on those issues. Mm -hmm. What a great place to be. Are you finding that it's easy to find good work that deals with these kinds of choices or are you having to really um, work hard mm -hmm. to, to pull it? I think out there, of there's a ton of work. There, there's just a, 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 a plethora of, of mm -hmm. artists uh, African-American playwrights writing about issues that matter, and there always have been. They haven't had uh, necessarily forums to the, and, and places that were interested in hearing those words and hearing that thinking, but uh, since uh, the oldest extant American, black American play, Escape for a Leap to Freedom, well, that was uh, written during the abolitionist days. And from that time on, there's been this uh, uh, wellspring of work that is serious and thoughtful and entertaining, but the world hasn't always been ready to hear it. So it's a matter of, of having to say no to a lot of good writers and, and pick, pick what resonates with you. I think so. I think I, so. I just heard... And our times. And our times. Yeah. Um, I just heard a bit of Gwen Eiffel's speech that she made this week at Westminster as part of their lecture series. I was out of town. Oh, what a well, shame. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, <clears throat> the part I heard was intriguing and she said, you know, Obama represents just part of what's a major movement and shifting in our culture and mm -hmm. we're, we're maybe giving him a lot of the attention right now, but do you see things from the artist perspective getting significantly better in the last, let's say, 10 years for African-American artists, writers, artists of all, yeah. all stripes? I think it, it's, a, um, it's a continuum, and um, we're moving in some areas and, and shedding light on some issues. There are always new ones, and I, I think the process of being a human being prescribes that you keep on asking those questions mm -hmm. and we'll keep on asking them. We'll keep on inviting a wide variety of people to uh, ask questions with us and engage in conversation over these issues that, that make us better. It makes us more of what we want to be and who we are. And uh, uh, the more people we can involve in that conversation, I think the better human beings we're going to become.